On today's show, we're back in Hawaii. And we get to visit an historic fishing village. everybody at home and welcome to another awesome episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Drew. And I'm Katie. On today's episode of Aqua Kids, we get an outrigger canoe paddling lesson and a chance to search the reef of the Mokawea fishing village for cool creatures. And we'll learn the history behind Hawaiian fishing villages. So you got your paddle? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Hey guys, today we're on the island of Oahu in Hawaii where we're going to be visiting one of the two remaining traditional fishing villages on the islands. Katie, I wonder how this village has been able to sustain itself for so long. Yeah, I'm really not sure. Let's go paddle over and take a look. All right, let's go. Okay, up, a little bit, yeah. Go down to Jamaica, okay. Heavy. Um. <laughs> Aloha gang, today we're going over to Mukawea, the island over there, and um, I'm just going to go over a little bit of paddling before we get in the canoe. So this is a paddle, so um, you're going to be holding it like this, your right hand on the bottom, top hand on the top, you're going to be squeezing the bottom, okay? Right leg on the right side, if you're paddling on the right side, you're going to stick it all the way out there and you're going to lean forward and pull, and then come back again. So you're pulling with your bottom and you're pushing down with your top hand and pushing forward, okay? Here we have everyone in the circle. We're gonna do a prayer right now. Okay, and Jamaica's gonna lead our pule. Um, um, All right, so we're gonna do a chant right now. It's called E Mai. It's a repeating chant. We do it three times. Um, and in essence, it's just asking, we're asking our ancestors to prepare us to intake knowledge. So, um, bring us the knowledge from above. All the hidden things, um, the songs, the chants, the poems. Um, bring us the knowledge, let us be ready, bring us the knowledge. E ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e o na me a huna no e a o na me le e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e o na me a huna no e a o na me le So good. Yes, 
we are. some muscle paddling those outrigger canoes. Yeah, Drew, it was a lot of work. When Aqua Kids returns, we explore the reef of the Mokawea Fishing Village. Aqua Kids presents Aqua Jobs, careers you can do to keep the planet green and blue. Want to be a farmer but don't want to work a plow? Then dive into becoming an aquaculturist. In addition to studying and providing care for aquatic organisms, aquaculturists also raise fish and shellfish for sport fishing and human consumption. They often work for fish farms, private laboratories, government agencies, as well as in the natural environment. To be an aquaculturist, you should have a real passion for working with lots of different aquatic plants and animals that live in a variety of environments. You also need to enjoy working outdoors and be in good physical shape. So hit the books and start working out. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. I can't wait to see what you find in the reef of the Mokawea Fishing Village, Katie. You'll be amazed by the diversity there, Drew. Let's go check it out. All right. Okay, so this is the reef of Mokawea Island, and if, as far as you can see, this way is all flat on um, low tide. And then if you guys look to the left, you could actually walk from this island to that island. So wow. before you could walk, this is exactly how the whole reef looks, even around on the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna head to that pile of coral over there to see if we can find a sea hare or a koala kai. We just wanna be careful of where we're walking to. This uh, species of limu or seaweed is an invasive species and limu can spread by fragmentation. So if you were to step on it, it looks kind of like orange shag carpet. If we were to step on it, and any fragment broke off, it could go and spread itself in another area. Um, so we want to just be aware of where we're walking as we head out there because there are small patches of it. So what species is it? So this is, uh, the common name is Gorilla Ogo, but it's Gracilaria salicornia. They're actually raising that in Connecticut to eat. Well, if you can send us some recipes, <laughs> we can <laughs> distribute that to our limo collectors and that will help it get us off our reef. Yeah. Okay, we're headed to that coral mound out there. So the Hawaiian word for coral is ko'a. Ko'a. So you see that rubble out there? That's um, coral. In Hawaiian, we call it ko'a. And that's came in from the tsunami. Um, was it last year, Jenny? 2011, yeah. The Japan tsunami. The Japan tsunami. Oh, wow. What's that? Uh, so this is coralline algae, so it doesn't look like the typical seaweed you see and in the Pacific coralline algae tend to be bigger or as equal reef builders as actual coral itself. Ooh. So this is called a light spotted sea cucumber. They're very common out here. No. So this is vana or uh, sea urchin and this is its mouth and its but you only have one opening <laughs> and, and they can walk along your hand. It just tickles if anyone's interested. Ooh. Oh, so what do we have here? Well, this is another sea cucumber similar to the light spotted one we saw yeah. before. Oh, see, he just oh, stuck wow. his mouth back in. Um, but he's in a different family. Uh, so that's why he looks a lot different and his, uh, this is his feeding mechanism. So oh, they're like the, fingers. They're yeah, like... outstretch them <laughs> and bring in particles and you can see him kind of squish back. Yeah, really flexible. I thought he was an octopus arm actually when oh, I first saw him. Crazy yeah. looking. Can I pick him up? Sure. Oh man, he's kind of... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. Why are you so slinky? I don't know if I can pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> His innards oh. smooshed together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so oh, oh, okay. I don't want to hurt him. Okay. He, he's sticking throat. to my fingers too. Is that yeah. like a mucus or, or some sort of secretion yeah. that. They'll emit uh, various mucuses um, for protection when. Some of the different species, when they get scared, they'll squirt out water or squirt out slimes. Sometimes they squirt out yeah. their guts, maybe. Like. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what is this? So this is another sea cucumber, uh, another loli, and... Loli. Fat loli. Oh. Yeah. Can I touch oh, it? Sure. It has a little oh. bit of a slime to it. <laughs> a little bit. Oh my gosh. Oh. It's so slimy. It's hard. Like, the other yeah. Hard. Yeah. Does it move? Um, they move very slowly, yeah. So why is it important to bring people out here? It's important for us as a community to show that we can be resilient, both our environment, our culture, and our economy, so that we can continue the practices to gather limu, to fish, uh, and all of these organisms that you saw out here today support that resilience of this area. Wow, Katie, you guys got to see a ton of cool creatures. We sure did, Drew. There were some pretty weird looking ones too, but it was great to see the efforts being made to protect this area and to preserve its ecology. And when we return, we'll learn about the history of this fishing village. Aqua Kids honors aqua heroes, people working hard to keep the planet green and blue. Skip Kemp is the Marine Science Division Director at Carteret Community College. Mr. Kemp is pioneering a study to test algae farming as a sustainable food source for fish and shellfish as the demand to feed the Earth's ever-growing population increases. Mr. Kemp is also experimenting with algae to produce a new source of inexpensive biodiesel fuel. You want to ride the water, but don't feel like paddling out to the surf, then try skimming the beach on a skimboard. Skimboarding is kind of like surfing, except the skimboarder rides the wash of a previous wave out to the next breaking wave. The earliest known record of skimboarding goes back to the 1920s. Lifeguards were photographed at Laguna Beach, California skimming the shore on huge plywood boards. The boards and the sport have come a long way since then. But if you want to try skimboarding, take it slow. Like all sports, it takes lots of skill and practice. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Now we get a chance to talk to some of the residents of the Mokawea Fishing Village and find out how the village they call home has changed over time. Aloha Kako. In behalf of Mokawea Fishermen's Association, we welcome you to Mokawea Fishing Village, Mokawea Island. We are here to talk about how we live here. My name is uh, Joni Bagood and I am a resident here of Mokwe Fishing Village and just want to make sure that Mokwe Island is taken care of. Um, God had blessed us with this treasure um, and it's for us not just to live here as residents but um, to be caretakers. Um, not uh, for us to get whatever we can out of Mokwe, it's what we can do for her. We are so blessed to have all of you Aqua Kids to um, share this day with us and it was just a, 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 such a blessing to um, have you here. This little island can show um, that we are self-sustainable, an example, small example for the rest of Oahu. It would be great for the rest of the island chain and the rest of the, the, the bigger picture, everybody in the world. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk to you guys about the past um, history of this place, the Mo'olelo, which are our stories of this sacred area. Um, on our shirts, you can see it says, the future is in the past. Um, our whole mission here is to go back to the past um, and learn from our ancestors. So um, our Hawaiian ancestors were very, very intelligent. They were what you guys would call in the Western world, sci um, great scientists. Um, when our ancestors came here, uh, we didn't have a written language until the 1820s when the missionaries came and taught our ancestors how to write. Yeah, um, so how we kept all of our ike, our knowledge, is through our, our chants, um, our olis, our music, our mele. Um, this was, and our, our mo'olelo, our stories. So this was basically our database. So this is how we know so much about our Hawaiian ancestors. This area, can you get this? Um, this whole area was filled with fish ponds. 
Did, do you, did you see any today? Yeah. No, don't. They're <laughs> all gone. Our island had over 180 fish ponds and there's less than 10 left. So our ancestors were very, very smart, intelligent, where they didn't have to guess. Oh, okay, we're going fishing. Let's try and feed our people. They gathered and they made wild fish ponds. Hopefully you guys will be able to visit some. And um, they cultivated fish. So you could walk from this island to this island to that island. And um, my husband's grandmother that's alive, she's 87 and she was raised here and she actually talks about um, walking from island to island wow. and gathering. This place how it was so abundant. It had every type of native fish here, every type of native limu. Actually, um, King Kalakaua actually had a place here and he called the, this area, um, he called it the Limu Gardens of Ma'e and Ma'e was his grandmother. So he named this area after his grandmother. Um, so this place is very important. Right now there's no protection for it. It's not a historic site, a state, federal. Um, we're slowly working on that so that we can keep bringing kids here and teaching science outdoors. This is another picture of, you can see the fish pond. This is a 1924 picture. You can see the fish ponds back there. Oh yeah. oh yeah. They were big. Those we also really big. had salt ponds. Have you ever seen salt made? Yeah, but we had salt ponds made. Um, we also had shark races out here. So shark. our ans yeah, so our oh, ancestors. Wow. Shark races. Yeah, they would okay. actually <laughs> straddle the hammerhead shark. You guys know what the hammerhead shark oh, is? Yeah. Right yeah. So we'd strad they would straddle the hammerhead, rope it up, and um, they would <laughs> race. You know how we were in the yeah. canoe today? They had canoe races here. They mm -hmm. also had shark races here. And how do you race what? a shark? Okay, <laughs> this is where you have to step in to the shoes of our kupuna, of our ancestors. They were very intimate with everything. They lived, they knew the rising of the sun, the moon, um, the stars. They're very, very intimate with that. And so um, we have um, what we call Amakua, which is, I guess in the Native American, they call it guardian spirits or um, that, like my ohana would actually feed one mano. Mano is a shark. And they would come down to the water and they would take care of it and malama it. Wow. Take care of it to it's malama. A shark. <laughs> yeah, and that, would, shark. that is their protector. Um, also the pueo, which is the owl. Um, the shark, this, uh, um, I've been interviewing kupuna in this area and they talk about this one shark called uh, makali'i and that was his name. And he would actually help the fishermen um, scare the fish into the upena, oh, which oh is the net. Gosh. And so he that worked, and cool. in that sense, they took care of um, the shark into shark took care of them. And that's our whole concept of, we are stewards of the aina, which is land, and I is food, and the land feeds us. The whole point here is to just really get kids interested in having a sense of place and connecting through science, history, math, because everything is all connected. And um, here in Hawaii, we have lost a lot. And um, we're just thankful that what we have here, we can still teach. And if we can walk in the wake of our ancestors and bring that to light to, for the next generation, um, that's our biggest goal here um, with all of us here. I think we mm -hmm. just have a passion to perpetuate our culture and our culture was very spiritually based and um, we were in tune with everything. They did not learn from books, they learned from being and doing and that's what you guys are doing and it's so awesome that you guys are <laughs> passing that on to, to all of these kids. It's so sad to see how human actions and urbanization have affected this area and this way of life. I know. Can you imagine if the fishing ponds were still there? These villages would still be self-sustainable. Don't go away. Aqua Kids will be right back. Here's our top story. Freshwater fish facing extinction. Fossil records indicate that in the past, one freshwater fish species would go extinct every three million years. A recent scientific survey found that between the years 1900 and 2010, freshwater fish species in North America went extinct at the alarming rate of 877 times faster than the fossil record. Between 1898 and 2006, North America witnessed the loss of 39 species and 18 subspecies of freshwater fish. 
If these trends continue, scientists estimate that an additional 53 to 86 species of freshwater fish may become extinct by the year 2050. These extinctions may be caused by several factors, including pollution, dam construction, and the channelization of rivers. The future of freshwater fish in North America may be uncertain, but it is clear that if we do not take action now, the consequences may be dire. That's all for Aqua News. Now, back to Aqua Kids. Wow, Katie, what an amazing show. I know, outrigger canoes, bizarre reef creatures, and an authentic fishing village. Yeah, and visiting historic sites like the fishing village help educate people about traditional Hawaiian culture and the importance of preserving it. I know, and that's why it's so important to remember that everyone can do their part to keep this planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website for cool eco tips. And fun links to show you how we can keep the world and the water. A great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua Kids. Kids. Thank you.